So this is the part 1 of beta blockers where I'll cover the classification of beta blockers. How do the beta blockers work? Non-selective versus cardio-selective beta blockers and the characteristic features of beta blockers. Classification of beta blockers. The beta blockers can be classified as non-selective, selective and mixed alpha and beta blockers. The non-selective beta blockers are propranolol, timolol, sotalol, nadolol, pindolol and oxprinolol. The cardioselective beta blockers are metoprolol, atinolol, bisoprolol, bitoxolol, esmolol, seliprolol and nebibolol. Mixed alpha and beta blockers are Labetalol and carbidilol. Next, types of beta receptors and how do the beta blockers work? The beta receptors are mainly of two types. Beta 1 receptors and beta 2 receptors. The beta 1 receptors are predominantly expressed in the heart and kidney. While beta 2 receptors are mostly present in the smooth muscles of the blood vessels, uterus, GI tract, liver. So how do the beta blockers work? The beta blockers work by blocking the actions of neurotransmitters that is epinephrine and norepinephrine and preventing the stimulation of beta adrenergic receptors and blocking the actions of the receptors. Some of the beta blocking actions are as follows. Beta 1 receptor blocked action on heart. Stimulation of beta 1 receptors of the heart result in increased contractility and increase in the heart rate. So by blocking the beta 1 receptors, the heart rate and the contractility decreases and this decreases the stroke volume and the cardiac output and this is one of the important mechanisms for the reduction of fall in blood pressure and therefore beta blockers are used as an antihypertensive agent. Secondly, by decreasing the contractility of the heart, the workload on the heart decreases. So this explains the use of beta blocker as an anti-anginal agent. Thirdly, beta blockers decrease the AV conduction by increasing the refractive period at the AV node. There is decreased automaticity and this explains its use as an anti-arrhythmic agent. Next, Beta-1 receptor blocked action on the kidney. Stimulation of beta-1 receptors results in increased renin release. So increased renin results in increased stimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system resulting in excessive formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. Excessive angiotensin 2 and aldosterone action has a damaging effect on cardiac myocytes resulting in cardiac remodeling. Therefore, beta blockers by inhibiting the activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system prevents cardiac remodeling and it also has a protective action on the kidney. Beta blockers also have a renoprotective action on the kidney by preventing the excessive stimulation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system and preventing the formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. So, this is useful in the treatment of diabetic nephropathy. Next, we move on to beta-2 receptor blockade actions. The beta-2 receptors are expressed mostly in the smooth muscles of the peripheral blood vessels, the bronchial smooth muscles, the GI tract, the liver, uterus, bladder and so on. In the smooth muscles of the blood vessels, beta-2 and alpha-1 receptors are present. The stimulation of beta-2 receptors results in vasodilatation, while stimulation of alpha-1 receptors results in vasoconstriction. Therefore, beta blockers by blocking the beta-2 receptors result in unopposed vasoconstriction resulting in vasospasm in the peripheral blood vessels. 
and this worsens the symptoms of peripheral vascular disorders such as Raynaud's disease, frostbite and so on. Beta 2 receptors are also present in the smooth muscles of the bronchial airways and stimulation of beta 2 receptors result in relaxation of the airways or bronchodilatation of the airways. Administration of beta blockers block the beta 2 receptors preventing the relaxation and resulting in increased prone of the bronchial airways. So this results in worsening of bronchial asthma. The third site of beta 2 receptor is the liver. Stimulation of beta 2 receptors in the liver cells result in glycogenolysis and neoglucogenesis. This helps in raising the blood glucose level to normal in response to hypoglycemia. Also in hypoglycemia, the symptoms of hypoglycemia are related to sympathetic stimulation such as palpitation, sweating, tremor and so on. So this warns the patient to take glucose and helps in the treatment of hypoglycemia. The use of beta blockers in diabetic individuals who are more susceptible to insulin induced hypoglycemia the compensatory mechanisms that are responsible for raising the blood glucose level are blocked. So the patient goes into hypoglycemic unawareness or hypoglycemic coma. Also the symptoms that are related to sympathetic stimulation that wants the patient to take glucose are blocked and this further leads to the incidence of hypoglycemic unawareness. So what are the advantages of cardioselective beta blockers over non-selective beta blockers? The cardioselective beta blockers are safer in bronchial asthma because they have no action on beta 2 receptors. Whereas the non-selective beta blockers block the beta 2 receptors of the bronchial airways increasing the tone of the bronchial smooth muscle resulting in worsening of bronchial asthma. The cardioselective beta blockers are also safer in diabetic individuals who are treated with insulin and are more prone to hypoglycemia. This is because the compensatory mechanisms that are responsible for raising the blood glucose level remains intact and the symptoms of hypoglycemia are also not affected. Whereas non-selective beta blockers block the beta 2 mediated compensatory mechanisms and also block the symptoms of hypoglycemia so the patient goes into hypoglycemic unawareness and hypoglycemic coma, which is a life-threatening condition. Cardioselective beta blockers are safer in peripheral vascular disorders because they have no action on beta 2 receptors. Whereas the non-selective beta blockers block the beta 2 receptors, so there is unopposed alpha-mediated vasoconstriction and this worsens the peripheral vascular disorders. Next, we move on to some of the characteristic features of non-selective and selective beta blockers. The non-selective beta blockers include propranolol, timolol, sotalol, pindolol and oxprinolol. Propranolol. One of the unique properties of propranolol is that it has a membrane stabilizing action, which means that it abolishes the propagating action potential and has a local anesthetic-like action. It is less preferred as an anti-glaucoma agent in the eye because it can cause corneal anesthesia. The next drug, Timolol. Timolol is widely available as eye drops and it is highly efficacious and potent in reducing the intraocular pressure in management of wide-angle glaucoma. This is because the beta receptors that are present in the ciliary body epithelium that are responsible for the formation of aqueous humor is beta 2 subtype. So timolol by blocking the beta 2 receptors reduces the formation of aqueous humor thus reducing the intraocular pressure and is useful in the management of glaucoma. The next drug, sotalol. Sotalol has low lipid solubility. Therefore, it has lesser penetration into the central nervous system, so the CNS effects are less. Also, sotalol has potassium channel blocking property and class 3 anti anthemic property in addition to the beta blocking action. The other drugs are pindolol and oxprinolol. 
both pindalol and oxprinolol has membrane stabilizing action and beta 1 agonist action so they partially stimulate the beta 1 receptors there is lesser bradycardia and myocardial depression associated with these drugs and they are useful in the treatment of patients who are prone to bradycardia and who have low cardiac reserve as in congestive heart failure. Some of the cardioselective beta blockers with the characteristic properties are as follows. Metoprolol. Metoprolol has good oral absorption but bioavailability is less because of high first pass metabolism. Therefore, multiple doses are needed in a day. Metoprolol succinate is available as an extended release formulation where the drug is slowly released in the body, thus resulting in a prolonged duration of action of the drug. Atenolol Atenolol overcomes the drawback of metoprolol. It has a longer tea half and is taken once daily. Next drug, bisoprolol. It has higher beta-1 selectivity compared to metoprolol and atenolol. Therefore, it is a highly potent and effective drug for the treatment of hypertension. Next drug, nebivolol. Nebivolol has a unique property of increasing the nitric oxide synthesis. Due to increased nitric oxide production, there is decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance, increasing the blood flow, increasing the stroke volume, and this benefits patients with congestive heart failure. Also, nebivolol decreases the mortality and morbidity irrespective of left ventricular ejection fraction. Thirdly, nebivolol has anti-atherosclerotic property. Nebivolol inhibits platelet aggregation, modulates leukocyte and monocyte adhesion to the endothelium, and modulates smooth muscle cell proliferation. So these are some of the cardinal features responsible for the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. In this way, nebivolol acts as an anti-atherosclerotic agent. It is also useful as an anti-hypertensive agent as it causes vasodilatation and reduces the blood pressure. Next drug, esmolol. Esmolol is an ultra-short acting beta-1 antagonist with a duration of action of 8 to 10 minutes only. Esmolol is a very useful drug for the treatment of supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, control of heart rate and blood pressure during surgery. The next drug, Bitoxolol. Bitoxolol is available as eye drops for the treatment of glaucoma. Unlike propranolol, which has a membrane stabilizing action or which causes corneal anesthesia, Bitoxolol lacks membrane stabilizing action and therefore it is preferred over propranolol for the management of glaucoma. When compared with Tibolol, Bitoxolol has beta-1 selective action. So it is less efficacious than Tibolol because most of the beta receptors that are present in the ciliary body epithelium and are responsible for the formation of aqueous humor are of beta-2 subtype. So by having selective action on beta-1 receptors alone, Bitoxolol is less efficacious compared to Timolol which blocks also the beta-2 receptors. However, Bitoxolol is safer in patients with bronchial asthma, diabetes, peripheral vascular diseases because it lacks beta-2 action. The next drug is Celiprolol. Celiprolol is a selective beta-1 blocker with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. So it has partial agonist action on beta-2 receptors. Therefore, it is a preferred drug for the treatment of a hypertensive patient with bronchial asthma. Next, we come to mixed alpha and beta antagonists. So the drugs are labitalol and carvedilol. Carvedilol has a unique antioxidant property. Carvedilol inhibits free radical induced lipid peroxidation and also inhibits smooth muscle mitogenesis. It also reduces mortality in myocardial infarction. The common adverse effect with carbidilol is dizziness and hypotension. Therefore, it is used with caution in patients who are using diuretics and the elderly patients. These are my references. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share.